Here's the thing. I know you guys are probably overwhelmed with Vlogmas content and what everyone else is posting for their What I Knit in 2023. So I'm going to keep it quick. This is literally everything. I'm going to go through this like lightning speed. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, what went well, what went terribly wrong. Okay, I'm really excited. I've waited a whole year to film this video and I finally have some stuff to show you now. This is everything I knit in 2023. Really quick background information. I started knitting my first garments in October 2022. Before that, I was mostly knitting garter scarves and I'm talking about like middle school. So I took like a 10 year hiatus and last October I said we're gonna start knitting clothes and a year and a couple months later, here we are. In today's video, I'm gonna show you most things that I knit in 2023. It's not everything. There's a couple of socks, accessories, and a sweater that I no longer have with me, and some stuff that I've already frogged. So it's everything that I currently have with me here. In the spirit of keeping this video as short as possible, I'm gonna go through these things pretty quickly. I will leave all the details, yarn, cost, sizing, needles, anything that I have and I can find, I'll leave that all down below. So if anything interests you and you want to make it maybe in 2024, you will have all that information available. Okay, so without further ado, the first garment sweater that I've ever made, period, is this guy. This is the Snowfall sweater by Unlucky Knits. It's knit up in two strands of mohair held double and I knit the smallest size, extra small. I don't know who I was, okay, choosing to knit a mohair sweater for my first ever sweater project. Granted, it is a raglan sweater, so fairly simple sweater construction, but I showed it a little bit earlier. You can see the sleeves are these beautiful statement bell sleeves. I love it so much. And also the audacity that I had for <laughs> picking the bougiest mohair it, actually this was around the time that shibuya knits announced they were closing down going out of business and actually recently i learned that they are coming back at least with their mohair so i'm really excited about that because this is the shibuya silk cloud mohair and at the time at my local yarn store they had eight seven or eight skeins of this mohair on 40 percent sale 40 percent off so I was like, why not? First sweater project. I've heard really good things about Shibui uh, Silk Cloud and they're going out of business. I can get the yarn at a 40% discount. I'm just gonna go for it. Guys, this cost me $150. <laughs> and I did run out of yarn at the end, uh, but that's because my sleeves are so crazy different. Okay, I know I said I was gonna go through this fast and I'm like taking forever now, but the sleeves are two different I don't know how to show you best. They're two different sizes. Can you tell? One sleeve is significantly bigger than the other. So I ran out of yarn and this was a very expensive project. And also the neckline is super tight. I can barely get my head through this. I have to, it like rubs off all my makeup and like completely messes up my hair. So I'm not gonna try this on for you in this clip at least. Maybe I'll do a future clip, but yeah, first sweater ever. I, I mean, details for like how I made this, my pain points and all that stuff are in a podcast video that I did with this. So if you wanna know more details, go watch that video. The Ripple Halter Top by Jessie Made. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Look at that yarn. It's got blues and yellows and purples. Gorgeous, completely gorgeous. Yep, like I said, pattern is by Jessie Mae Designs. The yarn is Gusto Wool Nocta. This is a super wash and nylon, it's like a sock yarn pretty much, fingering weight, uh, yarn that my boyfriend actually bought for me while he was on a trip to San Francisco. He liked the colorway, he's a big blue, purpley type of guy. And so he bought one skein for me and one skein was just enough to make this little halter top. I did modify this a little bit, so first of all, this pattern is so cool, and I want it to feel cool. <laughs> but the pattern calls for a very narrow, like this front part is super narrow, it's supposed to be like here, and then it, it flares out a little bit um, when you join from the body, 
I wasn't super comfortable with that. I'm still not super comfortable with that. So the modification that I made was I knit a different size for the stitch count for the front panel here. So that it'd just be a little bit wider. So I wouldn't like be as, I wouldn't feel as exposed. There's a lot of projects on Ravelry where people follow the pattern as written and they look really cool. I just was a little self-conscious. It didn't feel that cool. So I made that modification and I'm really glad I did because I feel really comfortable in this. I will say, made this a little bit small, so it's a little bit tight around the armpit area, and I'm wondering if I should re-block this and stretch it out a little bit more and hope that it'll fit a little bit better. I might actually do that right after this video. But otherwise, super, super happy with this project. And I do feel like I have at least 10 more cool points with that on. And the cost was about $25 for one skein of this. I guess it's hand dyed, right? Hand dyed yarn. Vest number two, spring edition pattern is by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And it's classic. I mean, she's a classic, classic gal. <laughs> it's a black v-neck sweater vest. I There's not like that much to say about it. I get a ton of wear with this. The yarn is one strand of hobby soft alpaca held with a strand of knitting for olive mohair in the colorway midnight held together and this is knit up pretty quickly it's on um bigger needles five millimeter needles and you're holding a dk with a lace so it knits up pretty quick and i do get a lot of wear out of this oh my gosh i think i wore it like when i first finished it i think i wore it three times a week for like a month <laughs> i got a ton a ton of wear out of this the yarn cost is a little bit interesting because the yarn I actually originally bought to make a balloon sweater, which I no longer have here with me. I gave it to my sister. Long story short, it was a little bit too cropped, the sleeves and the body. Um, and, you know, obviously I had leftover yarn, so I could totally go back and lengthen it. But that being said, this I feel like would be a pain in the ass to frog because of the mohair and the alpaca. Alpaca is already slippery enough by itself. I work with metal needles, you add in the mohair, and then you have to frog. It sounds like a nightmare. So anyways, the balloon sweater I gave to my sister. I purchased six balls of knitting for olive mohair and eight balls of the hobby alpaca for the balloon sweater. And in total, it was about $140. So with that yarn combo though, I made the balloon sweater and I ended up having enough leftovers to make this vest and I actually have still more leftovers <laughs> to make uh, something else. Maybe using this yarn combo as a contrast color in a future sweater. This was the first project that I did Italian bind off on and you can't tell because it's dark yarn and there's fluffy mohair but it's so screwed up. It's completely twisted or backwards or something but Again, you can't tell because of the black yarn, and that was one of the reasons why I ventured into the world of Italian bind off was because I figured even if I screw it up, no one's going to be able to tell, and that is correct. And my body binding is pretty tight. I wish I did it just a little bit looser because when this is on my body, um, the body ribbing is like... It, it does bug me a little bit. Like, I can feel the ribbing, but honestly, pretty good. I would give this like a 9 out of 10. I wear this a lot. Next up is the Poppy Tee by Petite Knit. Please excuse the creasing. Um, I've had it folded up for a while now. I haven't worn this in a while because there's no wool content in this yarn. The yarn is Noro Sonata in this electric blue color. Um, hello color. You can see I'm pretty obsessed with blue. <laughs> I had a big blue moment and actually I have one more blue sweater coming up. So yeah, Noro Sonata. Um, the fiber content is 35% cotton, 25% rayon viscose, 20% silk, and 20% nylon slash polyamide. So as is the case with most Noro yarns, the color is not super, what's the word? Even, I guess. It is... Um, there's a lot of variation in the dye. I don't think you would call this variegated though. I don't know. And I actually did a little bit of helical knitting. So this was my first time doing helical knitting and I started it when I joined in the round to knit the body. So around this area. And I think it worked out pretty well. Um, the striping 
Initially, when I first finished it, the striping bothered me a lot, but now it really doesn't bother me. And trust me, I've worn this a lot. In the summer, I wore this so much. And I'm looking over now for pilling, and I don't... I don't see any pills. There's like a couple of very, very, very minor pills. Like one I just picked off, but like barely any considering how many times I have worn this this year. I bought three skeins of the Sonata to make this tea, but as you can see, it's pretty cropped. And I only ended up using two full skeins, so that was about $45 total. And I do have one skein left over, probably gonna make a tank top with it. It's just such a good like summer hot weather yarn. <laughs> Next up is a bit of a fail on my end. No fault to the pattern at all because I went rogue. <laughs> this is the Tecla Top by Milena Paulina. It's a very heavily modified Tecla Top. So the original pattern is very loose and airy and flowy and it looks hella cute. And I looked at it and I was like, mm, I want a tighter fitting peplum moment. So <laughs> this is the front. In the back, this is really obvious, you can see that V there in the middle where I just did decreases on both sides because I was like, I want it to like snatch my waist. <laughs> Readers, it did not snatch my waist. First of all, I did not plan where to do the decreases. So after I ran out of room here in this triangle, I was like, mm, I want to decrease it a little bit more. I went to the sides, <laughs> can you see that? And I just did more decreases along the sides. Like again, I just went fully rogue with this, but the yarn is a cashmere yarn that I bought from a random website that I will link down below if you wanna get it. It was $67 total. It's 100% goat cashmere, and I forget how many balls that I bought, but I think I bought six or eight. I held it double since it's a fingering weight and the Tecla pattern calls for a DK weight. I held the cashmere yarn double um, and it is super fluffy. Hopefully you can see it a little bit better. It's really soft, but also very fluffy. I feel like the only reason why this hasn't pilled like crazy is because I've worn this twice. <laughs> maybe twice i think once to take a photo and then once seriously and then i like never wore it again so i just don't love the fit of this i'm probably going to end up frogging it depending on how hard it is to frog and it does have a ton of i-cord as you can see so the i-cord on the um, bottom edge here as well as along the sides and the straps <laughs> so a ton of i-cord i haven't unpicked i-cord before i don't really know where to start with that but I would have to figure that out if I wanted to frog this. So, kind of a fail. Never really wear this. If anyone wants it in my family, I guess I could give it to them. I think my sister has expressed interest, but then like she never asked about it again, so I think she forgot about it or is no longer interested. So next up is another candidate for frogging, unfortunately, and it's the another drawstring cami top by another knit. This was my first ever test knit. So um, the designer put out a tester call on Instagram. I have a couple of other patterns that I really want to make by the same designer. And I'm like, what? Why not? I'll just like test out her pattern writing. It will also be my first test knit. So it was a really fun experience. Um, it was fun seeing everyone's color choices and their progress and all that stuff. That part of it was fun. The actual knitting was a little bit brutal. So the yarn is Madeline Tosh Twist Light and the colorway is Tarte. I love this color. Oh my gosh. I adore this deep red so much. But here's the deal. When knitting, you knit this flat. So it's two flat panels. You have a front panel and then a back panel. You're knitting flat. It's one by one rib, I think. Let me count it. Yeah, it's one by one rib the entire time. And then at the end, when you're done knitting the two uh, pieces, the two panels, you mattress stitch or mattress seam the sides together. And then you knit miles upon miles of I-cord. <laughs> I-cord straps, and then for the actual drawstrings as well, which they connect in a pretty cool way. Look at that. Uh, this is all hand knit I-cord. And I didn't know at 
this time that there's a machine that you can just like spin the wheel and it'll knit the i-cord for you i hear it is a little bit fiddly but i assume presume that it is much faster than knitting i-cord by hand i wish i had that when i was doing this because man what a slog <laughs> I did wear this piece quite a bit in the summer because it is a very tiny little tank top and I like it but the only thing is I probably probably would frog this because look at this I'm like I'm barely stretching it it's hella loose it probably stretched out because it's a superwash yarn I don't think I told you the fiber content it's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So when I first finished it, it was a perfect fit. And after wearing it for, I don't know, five times, something like that, it just like got looser and looser to the point where I could not lean over because yeah. <laughs> so at this point, my options are either wear this with like fashion tape on the inside so that nothing happens or I frog this, which again, it's gonna be a pain because of all the eye cord, but I frog this and just repurpose the yarn for something else because I truly love this yarn color. It is such a great, beautiful color. And one last note to mention about this is the one skein of Madeline Tosh Twist Light that I bought for this project was about $30. So a little bit pricey. The Piping Hot Sweater by Lily Kate France and you can see why it's called that because there are these, again, I-cord, dude, what, I was in like an I-cord craze or something even though I was so tired of it by this point. This was yet another test knit um, and that test knit was a blast. There were so many people involved in that test knit and it was, that community was super, super fun to be a part of. So this is a full-on sweater. It's actually... I was gonna say it's not cropped, but that's a lie. It's like a tiny bit cropped. That's one of my main lessons learned this year is to stop making cropped sweaters or like stop making everything that I knit ever cropped. Like have some full size, full length pieces going into next year. That's my goal at least. But this yarn combination, the blue is Sandus Garn Duo and that is a, it's almost a 50-50 cotton and merino blend. I think it's like 45-55 to guess and the piping color so this chartreuse yellow green color is wool stock fingering light and the colorway is golden meadow and since the pattern calls for a dk weight yarn uh, i did hold the the wool stock fingering because it's fingering i held it double so it's pretty cool the piping goes all the way down to the sleeve cuff which is really cool it does stop, I'm trying to show you, it does stop right before the ribbing on the body, but if you wanted to, you could easily lengthen that all the way down. And it is a saddle shoulder construction. So that was also really cool. It was like a, I worked contiguous saddle shoulder before where you don't have to like cast on at different edges of the saddle, but this was that where you had to cast on on one side and then pick up stitches on the other side. So that was an interesting construction. I'm really glad I did this. I learned a lot about sweater constructions this year. I worked drop shoulder, raglan, and saddle. And contiguous like set in sleeve with a poppy tee. So um, I'm really happy that I branched out and like did a lot of different sweater constructions because that's just really cool knowledge. Talking about cost, so I bought eight balls of the Sandus Garn Duo, which came out to be about $80, and the Woolstock Fingering Light was about $10 for just one skein. So in total, this was $90. I do still have two balls of the Duo left over, and I think 50 grams? No, 25 grams? I can't remember if the, if this fingering weight yarn was a 100 gram skein or a 50 gram skein, but I have about half of a skein left of the fingering. So I could make like a tank top or something with the duo, but I will say I don't love the duo yarn. It is weirdly itchy. I don't know what it is that makes it itchy because it shouldn't be the merino. The merino should be fine. I don't have a wool allergy. 
So in the future, I probably won't purchase more Duo again because knitting it up was a great experience. I have no complaints about that at all, but the wear is not great. It's, yeah, it's just a little bit itchy and I feel like I have to wear something under this. Otherwise, I'm gonna be like scratching myself all day. Poppy tea number two. This is my second poppy tea ever and of the year. I definitely will make more because I want to make one more poppy tee with the longer sleeves as called for in the pattern. But this is my extra cropped poppy tee. So let me hold it up to my Noro Sonata one and you can see the difference. Boom. Yeah, look at that. Holding it up together, you can see that this guy is truly extra cropped or extra tight and extra cropped. Uh, this yarn is a splurge. This yarn is Hedgehog Fibers Tweety and it is hella expensive. It was like 30 something dollars per skein and I bought three skeins for a total of $110 for a tiny tee. That's right. It's a tiny t-shirt that costs $110. The yarn is a little bit rougher than merino, but it softens up a lot when you put it in water and I did not soak this with wool conditioner. So I imagine if you do it with that, it'll get even softer, presumably. Um, but still, even with just like water, it blocked out beautifully. I can now wear this next to skin. Granted, that'll still be a little bit itchy, but it's actually a different itch than the duo and I don't understand, like this itch, I can tolerate. This is like a little bit intolerable and I don't really get it. Okay, we're almost at the end. This next one is my Louvre sweater. This is hands down, bar none, easily my favorite thing that I've knit this way, this year. <laughs> the pattern is by Petite Knit. It's a big old non-cropped sweater. It's a raglan sweater. And it's got these nice wide sleeves. Oversized raglan, love it. This yarn, obsessed. I held a strand of Monostel Uruguay Milo in the colorway Petal, which is a 35% linen, 65% merino yarn. And I held it with a strand of Surrey Alpaca, which is like the white and the brownie pieces, the brown yellow tan pieces. The Milo, I bought three skeins on sale for a total of $60. And the Surrey Lace, I bought three skeins not on sale for a total of $96. So that comes out to be $154 for the sweater, which is insane. And it matches my very first sweater because that was about $150 as well. So I guess I started and end the year with just expensive ass sweaters. The raglan increases for the sweater are insane. They took me so long because there's so many increases that you have to do, but honestly worth it. I wear this sweater so often. I have so many pictures with this sweater and I wear it so many different ways. It's definitely pilling. I don't know if you can see some of the pills that are forming because I just, I wear this so often and the Surrey is genuinely so beautiful and soft and silky. <laughs> I don't know. I think I've been converted to alpaca Surrey, which is interesting because I think I'm allergic to alpaca, but not the Surrey lace. I don't know why I don't get any not even an ounce of irritation with this sweater and i'm obsessed with this this is this is my baby okay last couple of things i have to show you this is going to be super quick because it is a set look at this it is a pair of gloves these are the very classic gloves by pearl soho it's a free pattern and then a skinny scarf this is the canapé scarf by ulan knitwear and the soho scrunchie 
by uh, Tori Yu. Hey everyone, this is editing Erin popping in to say that I did not realize my camera stopped recording in the middle of that clip. There wasn't really anything else I really said about the set, the scrunchie, the gloves, the scarf set. Yarn costs can be found down below. Uh, the only thing that I do wish I captured is I showed you that the finger widths between the two gloves are vastly different. I have one glove where the index finger is a little bit thicker than the other fingers and the index finger on the other glove. Somehow when I was splitting these stitches for each finger, the index finger on one of them just turned out larger than the rest. No idea what happened, I just thought that was funny. And with that, it's the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great entry into the new year. I hope it's been good to you so far and if not, you still have the rest of the year to make it better. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Bye!